What is going on, my region fan? March here. This is Fragbox TV. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Toronto. Welcome to our saltwater aquarium store. And today's video is brought to you by me, but also inspired by a comment. Somebody asked, can you please do a video on macroalgae? Yes. Thank you, 100%. I'm having a little bit of creative fatigue. It's not always easy to come up with new and different videos, especially when we have over 1,100 out there. So I try not to make the same video twice. So thank you very much. I can't remember your name, but if you're watching, this video is really for you. And if there is a video that you guys wanna see in particular, you can always comment below or even send us an email. Now think of topics that are going to benefit a lot of reefers. So this one on macroalgae, of course, it is ever growing in popularity. I have recently just completely fallen in love with this stuff and have become mildly obsessed. Now, if you ask us, hey, can you do a video on something super duper specific? Like, can you do a video on the nine foot sense extension cable from Hydros? No. I'm not gonna do it. Sorry, I love hydros. They make great extension cables. It needs to be a topic that uh, a couple thousand people could watch, have fun with, and learn from, from the video. So, oh, hello fishies. You guys are looking a little hungry. Maybe before we get started, we'll do a quick little feeding demonstration brought to you by the only fish food we feed here in the store. And I'm still waiting for these guys to just give me the stamp of approval on the video that I shot over at their factory. This is the only food we feed all of our clowns and all of our captive bred fish. If you didn't know, we only sell actually captive bred fish in the store. We don't take anything from the wild when it comes to fishies. You can find this awesome stuff actually uh, on our site. It's called Vitalis. Anyways, let me give you a little nice panorama of this top tank because I think it really embodies this growing trend in the hobby where we're mixing macroalgae with corals. It used to be, at least when I started, macros were really just for your uh, refugium. You know, we really just, from what I remember, it's just chato. Maybe you see some dragon's tongue. There are so many. There are websites out there now that I find myself just like window shopping for so many different types of macroalgae. And the thing about them is they're kind of hard to find new ones. Why do we even want to keep them to begin with? One, they look really cool. And I like any time that we get this aesthetic look where a saltwater tank almost resembles a freshwater tank. And I know it's kind of silly because they're completely different, but it, it gives the, the sort of appearance, the sort of aesthetics that we get from freshwater. I really liked this sort of hybrid look that we're slowly moving towards. Now, the other thing is they are really beautiful. Like this one is this striking red. I just scored it. It is a tabling type of, it kind of looks like dragon's tongue. I'm not 100% sure what it is, but it only grows horizontally. So color, if you don't have tangs that are gonna munch on it and you just have a bunch of smaller fish, then it's safe. You can add it and you're really not gonna, you know, be able to compete with this sort of color with a coral. Now, one of the best parts, why we really add them, why we started adding them in the first place is filtration. So, macroalgae are gonna consume nitrates, they're gonna consume phosphates, and the idea behind that is they're gonna out-compete nuisance algae in the tank. As you see in these ones, they are pretty, they're pretty darn clean, with the exception of like a little bit of dino, on the substrate there, there's really no other type of algae other than the macros, like the one we call burning bush, this blade one here, and then the tanks are spotless because they don't, the algae don't have a chance to grow because they're getting competed out of the same nutrients by the beautiful macroalgae. Now, I highly recommend refugiums if you have the capacity in running one. Super, super useful, and it's just a natural form of filtration. As long as you have a light, and enough nitrates and phosphates, these are really, really easy plants to care of. This is what we call palm tree calerpa, and you can see where it gets its name. It looks like a palm tree, so there's really nothing like it when it comes to coral. Now, it's not the most vibrant green, but it adds a lot of dimension and texture to your tank, and for me, it's become, like I said at the beginning of the video, sort of an obsession, trying to collect and find different ones because it's not that easy, at least for us here in Canada. So I was so happy to get some of this red, 
grape calerpa. It's finally starting to grow. It's finally starting to take off so I can share it with the world. But it's not like ordering corals. So when we get corals from our supplier, we get a bunch of photos. There's a large Excel sheet with a bunch of prices and we can order as many as the permit allows. Hundreds of beautiful pieces. We actually have a shipment arriving. Um, it's gonna be one on Tuesday, one on Friday. So this is gonna be completely full of new corals. Relatively, once you've figured it out, you have the permits in place, it's not that hard to find them and to get them. Now, for us, macroalgae's not the same. Quite difficult, actually, to source new ones, to get new ones. So I think that's one of the reasons. If they're hard to find, they're useful, they're beautiful, and I like collecting things. You know, I'm into old Pokemon cards and old BMWs, something that I use to get them uh, growing. So we're at the point where they are limited from the nutrients in the water because we have so much of it growing. This is all connected into one system. We have Dragon's Breath, this really nice red, easy to grow, super fast growing red one. Now, this one is kind of new to us. This is what we call the Toadstool, Toadstool Calerpa, and it gets the coolest little tips, the coolest little ends on it. You see how it's growing? It really resembles a coral in structure. This is one that I always struggled with. To keep, somebody gave us a large portion and then boom, it's really, really happy. It's huge. And this is another one that's been doing really well for us. It's the Blade Macroalgae. I love this one because you get that, again, that freshwater sort of look in your saltwater tank. I've started using this Chato Grow from Brightwell. You can buy it from us. You can buy it from any local fish store. Support your, your local LFS. I'm sure if you go in, they're gonna have Brightwell stuff on the shelf. And it's called Chato Grow. It's marketed for Chato. It really works as a multi-nutrient for all macroalgae. And I can tell you that my growth has really, it slowed down before I was using it and it's back to um, stuff growing really, really nicely again because I think it was just lacking some of the stuff it needed, the iron, cobalt, molybdenum. I've never tried doing an ICP test on our macro algae. We call it macro vert. Um, we have a mix of captive redfish, macro algaes, but also some inverts in here as well. I've never done an ICP test on it, but maybe I should. I'd be curious to see how much these algaes are really sucking up from the water. This is one that I keep at home, which is the feather calerpa, similar to the blade in structure, but it's got these really nice fern-like beautiful waving. It's so peaceful. You know what? I'm going to add that to my list of why I like keeping macro algaes. I like gardening at home, so it just kind of adds like another uh, dimensional aspect of gardening in my life, except it's underwater and happens to be at work. Now this stuff here, I can't, did not expect the, like, how do I say this? I didn't expect it to make my water so clear when it really started to take off and became a large chunk of macroalgae in the tank. My water got crystal, crystal, crystal clear. So it had almost like the same effects as running carbon. You ever change like a bag of carbon, you put some Chemipure in there and the next day you're just like, whoa, you know, it looks like you're running ozone. It's like the water is not even there. I was getting the same, or I'm having the same effect from these, this specific one. Is that the same for all of them? I'm not sure because it's the only one I have. I suspect that a lot of them would do the same. I think this might be my favorite one overall because when you put it under blue light, you get these glowing, glowing orange little dots. So it's really the only macroalgae that I have at least in this collection that under blue lights, it looks even cooler than under white lights. Now most of them, you wanna run a little bit stronger white light just to appreciate the color of the macroalgae and also to keep them growing. On this system here, I'm using aqua illumination blades and I'm using the coral grow. I believe these are the long, second longest one, the 60 inch. I love these lights. You know what? We're not sponsored by AI to say any of this. I just really like how sleek they are. The app, it connects right away. They are not cheap, but I like that you can't see the lights. Like when you're looking at the tank, there's nothing really to take away. At eye level, you just get this little sleek black cut tana sort of a light uh, that goes across. And because this tank is really so many soft corals and macro, white does tend to look best. We don't want to drown it out with blue light because then you're not going to see pieces like this beautiful, tall, wild Australian Xenia, uh, the branching cabbage coral. This is kind of a cool piece. I've actually never seen uh, anywhere else. This funky purple leather, it actually gets kind of cool green luminescent dots under blue light, some pineapple tree. GSP will show off under blue, but to really, really appreciate macroalgae, to make them look their best, 
and as well as most soft corals, you really want stronger white light. Can't remember the name of this one. Somebody just gave us this as well. And I've made the first little cutting, first little piece of it. So if anybody wants that, it's up for grabs. I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're watching and you feel like sharing, some macroalgae, I am in the market. If you're in Canada, if you're not in Canada, message me. I am always looking for some. Blue Rohypnea is one that has always evaded me. I have to give a little bit of love to this. I think, I think is Anthelia, just from the shape of the polyps, but it's so freaking white. Usually I'm used to seeing them beige. I'm really digging this coral. It's kind of boring, but if you guys know anything about March, I don't know why I'm talking in the third person, I really like white corals, white healthy corals, because it's such an unusual thing to find. A little bit of our red Ogo. This is kind of funky. It needs a little bit more flow because I find, oh yeah, exactly, like that. It invites some algae to grow on it like that. It'll just become a, a trap for hair algae um, once they get in there. It's, actually, what am I saying? No, it's quite easy to get it out. I was gonna say it's hard, it's not. It is really easy to get it out. We use a toothbrush and we actually take it over to the sink and we rinse them off under fresh water. So unfortunately, we lose some of the pods that are living in there, but it's really easy to clean. And then I just use this nifty little toothbrush I got off Amazon, they're 20 bucks. And best part, boom, completely underwater. So we use these a lot of times to clean not only our little frag plugs, but we can also use them to clean the macroalgae if they're getting a little bit out of control. Now for attaching them to rock, there are a couple options. I do like gluing them, so you can use any reef safe super glue that's out there. BRS makes one, Ecotech makes one, Polyp Lab makes one. If you love us and want to support uh, the store, you can look for the Reef Casa Super Set. That's the one that we use to attach all of them. Another really easy trick and is free. You can just grab a rubber band and take the base of your macroalgae and use a rubber band to attach it to a rock and just being on there, eventually it will grab. It'll just become, it, it sends out like, these feet like these little tentacles especially this one the palm tree it's really funky the way it does it it sends out little feelers and then it grabs hold into the sand so it's not going to move anywhere and i think that's it this one's currently on sale guys if you have any other questions about macroalgae i didn't want to talk about mangroves in this one because i think they deserve their own standalone video there's enough to talk about with them and keeping them and tips for success that i'll do that in a separate video because this is another thing that's super popular in the hobby and they're really easy and you should try them out because it's so cool to have any time you have something exiting the water, you know, like that, like a tree. Um, we have a large one here in the shop that we've had for a number of years and it's just coming directly right out of our overflow there. I think I've had it now three years, two or three years in the shop and we keep pruning it because it'll get really big, but that's a separate video. I wanna say thanks again. I can't remember your name for the one that suggested this video. If you wanna see another video, you mentioned it in the comments below. Keep in mind that we will pick ones that are very broad, general topics that a lot of people can watch, not super, super specific ones. But anyways, I wanna say thank you for watching and hope to see you on the next one. Bye guys.